this last uh, this one is an exercise it is also an important number to remember okay i think uh, for the previous slide still there is some confusion okay uh, let me let me explain it again. so this is a very important calculation let me you know redo it okay so what we know we know that okay so uh, let's see um let's look at from the interview perspective right? so uh, you are in the interview you are designing instagram okay so you are discussing with the interviewer that okay uh, i think 100000 re requests per second are coming to the system so 1000 uh, 100000 requests are coming to the system okay so your interviewer says yeah i'm fine with it so let's say 100000 requests per second are coming to the system And then uh, you uh, talk to your interviewer. So we have to serve the, let's say, download API or the view API. So when a user comes to the Instagram and the user is able to see a photograph. Right? So this is one API call. Okay, so I think 100 millisecond makes sense here because 100 millisecond is something that is almost real time. It's uh, it's uh, doable also. So yeah, so interviewer says yeah. I think 100 millisecond is fine. Let's work with 100 millisecond. Okay. So now you say okay. I have this number 100,000 requests per second. I know that one API call right, is taking 100 milliseconds. Okay. Now I need to identify that how many servers will be needed. How many servers will be needed to serve 100,000 requests per second? Right. So you look at this calculation from a very granular level first, and then you build up on it. Right. So who serves the API? Yes, a server serves the API, but inside server, it's actually the threads, right? Threads are the execution engine which are serving the API request. So, so you uh, you say okay. So then I need to identify first that. How many requests can be served by one thread in one second? So, so, so this is how you will build build up. So you start with thread. So you identify. So you say that. The API is taking 100 milliseconds to serve one API, right? And there are 1,000 milliseconds in one second because we have to because we are talking about these numbers at per second, right? So per second, how many requests are being served? So you say that 1,000 milliseconds are there in one second, and one API is taking 100 milliseconds. So threads are working constantly. They do not take a break. Right? So request one comes to this thread. Let's say it's, uh, the name is T1, thread one. Right? Request comes, it takes 100 milliseconds for the request and for the response. Once this is done, it will get another request. It will take again. 100 milliseconds, right? It will serve it back. This way, if if this exercise is done 10 times, right? So 100 milliseconds into 10 is 1,000. So this is one second. Right? So that means 
this one thread can serve 10 API requests in a second. I hope this part is clear. So this is where this part is coming, right? Request served by one server in one second. So that's why we have 1000 milliseconds divided by 100 milliseconds. So this is 10. So that means one thread is equal to 10 requests per second. So our buildup was from the thread first, then we go at the server level. Okay, now I know that one thread can serve 10 requests per second. How much server can do? Okay, uh, from the uh, previous discussion, I know that one server has 250 threads. So that means I have to just do 250 into 10. That is 2500. So that means one server can cater to 2500 requests per second. Once this is done, now I know, okay, at server level, how what is the requirement? Now I will say that, okay, let me extrapolate this. I know what one server is capable of. So I can do a very fair calculation now that how many servers will be required, right? So we know that we have to serve 100,000 requests. And I know that one server can serve 2,500 requests, right? So that means I need 40 servers. and so then you identify number of servers and then you adjust it for buffer. So this is uh, this is a servers running at 100% CPU capacity. Okay. So when we ideally it sh they should be running at 40 or 50%. So let's say 50% for easier calculation. So 40 by 50%. So this becomes 80. So we need 80 servers. So Sandeep, these 100,000 requests per second are coming from all the users. So that's why DAU, daily active users count is not, does not matter in this calculation. So the assumption was that, okay, we have 500 million daily active users and one out of five person is uploading one, uh, is sending a one request. So from that, uh, sorry, uh, that was for the photo uploaded, but, it, but yeah, the 100,000 requests uh, per second is something which is uh, coming from all the users. So also, uh, uh, you know, uh, like when uh, I can, I'll update it in the slides also. So. Whenever you are, you want to guesstimate that how many requests would be coming to the server. So, in cases of social networks, you can easily take hundred thousand, uh, hundred thousand requests per second or two hundred thousand requests per second. Google search gets sixty thousand requests per second. So, and I think Google search is very widely used. Right? So. We can, uh, for Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook kind of thing, we can take 100,000 requests. This can be applied to both read and write requests. Um, this is the question. So uh, it depends on the nature of the system. So if you are designing social network kind of thing, right? So writes doesn't matter because writes are, because the reads could be one could be one thousand times of writes. So even if we add hundred thousand plus, uh, we add thousand. So uh, let me do it. So let's say we have identified that reads are hundred thousand requests per second. Okay? 
and in that case what would be the request if i have a ratio of 1000 reads to one write so that means it would be what just 100 writes per second so if i add 100k plus 100 yeah. we can just ignore this number okay so uh, let's move to the next slide yeah so i was talking about this so this is an exercise and it is also an important thing to remember so it is about the availability of your system per day so you probably know about the two nines three nines four nines five nines of availability and if you are an experienced backend engineer there are very high chances that someone might be talking about it in your interview so so this is how it is done so 99 percent availability per day right that means one percent times your system was not available so if there are 100,000 seconds in a day, then 1% 1 of 100,000, that means your system was not, uh, was not available for 1,000 seconds in a day. And if we extrapolate it to a year, then if let's say 360 days are there, in that case, it becomes 360,000 seconds per day which is like 6,000 minutes per year. So with two nines of availability, your system was not available for 6,000 minutes in a year. Similarly, if we expand it to three nines, so 99% is two nines of availability. 99.9%, .9%, these are three nines of availability. So in that case, it becomes 0 0.1% of 100,000 requests. Oh, sorry. 1000 seconds in a day. Sorry, sorry. Um, so, 0.1% of uh, 100,000 requests in a day. Right? So, that is like 100 seconds per day, and if you calculate it, it's like 600 minutes per year. So, if you have three nines of availability, that means your system was not available for 600 minutes, which is like 10 hours. So your system was not available for 10 hours in one year. So you can do the similar calculation for four nines and five nines. Because if we take the exact number of 86,400 seconds, then this calculation becomes quite difficult to do in interviews. Want to become a software engineer at Google? You can, like thousands of our students. You just need to learn from those who've already cleared FANG interviews. At Interview Kickstart, our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like Google and Facebook. Our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including backend, full stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today